Well, since I was a kid, I've been fascinated with aviation, and I wanted to. Uh, I was born and raised in Jamaica, and I wanted to leave Jamaica so I could go explore the world. And so uh, I had this crazy idea when I was seven years old to build an aircraft to leave the island. And so I did that, and it was an aircraft without mechanics. It was more of a glider aircraft. So built it when I was seven years old. My sister and I went on the rooftop with my friend and told him to get on board and strap them into like a seatbelt configuration and said, when you get to America, make sure you bring back some snacks and stuff. And we were like little kids and he was like, yeah, yeah, man, yeah, man, I have the idea for that. He had no idea that then a few seconds we'd be pushing him off the rooftop. <laughs> so plane glided across the yard and the rest is history. And that's kind of how I got started. So where we currently are in the VTOL universe, okay. what's the current status? Well, um, well, right now I think the industry is very exciting. There's a lot of things happening in the industry. Uh, players like Joby Aviation, William Archer, uh, Ehang, Vertical, Blade, probably forgetting a bunch, but you've got some really cool people in this space that are making great technology uh, for VTOL aircraft using existing um, technology such as traditional lithium battery that has its challenges regarding payload because it's so heavy, uh, performance because of you basically for every person or so simple math, this is not exact science that you would place in the sky because of the gravitational pull and things of that nature, you would have to have a battery the size of one of the Tesla vehicles just to go in there. So if you see a, a VTOL aircraft that says we're gonna have uh, four passengers and a pilot, that means you have the equivalent some somewhat of four car batteries for EVs, not little tiny ones, and to be able to make that happen. Well, if you can't do that, you're gonna give something up that's called range. And that affects your performance. And so. As a result, by and large, most of the people in the industry are suggesting 25 miles, 50 miles, or 25 minute flights or something to that effect to be able to get you from A to B. What separates our company from everyone else is we're designing our own battery. We're creating our own system based upon things that we're currently putting in place, like our car division, which is right behind us, our Envies. And so we're building things where the car frame capacitates or actually transmits a lot of the energy that is stored um, from the battery in, in within the car. So we can get up to 10 times the amount of power for our next generation of vehicles, like the NV1s behind us. I call it NV1 because that's serial, it's, it's neighborhood vehicle serial number one. So we're pretty, that's pretty exciting in and of itself with what we're doing there. But the NV2, neighborhood vehicle serial number two, will incorporate a lot more technology that you'll see in our VTOL aircraft that we plan to unveil sometime this year. So, pretty so cool. Can you give us a little bit more specifications on the NV? What's the range? What's the price? When will it be available? For sure. Um, the NV1 is out now. They came out last year. Um, we, because we're starting up in this sector, um, we hand make all of our vehicles. So, which is pretty special in and of itself. You're not getting a printed vehicle at this point. Price range is under $20,000, which I think is affordable for most people within the, the American public. Uh, the range on it is close to 100 miles, which is a considerable amount of distance. And uh, the charging capabilities are threefold, 110, 220, or 240 power bolt. The 110 is something you can use like similar to, a, uh, akin to what you use for your cell phone, your Android or your iPhone uses a 110 phone output. 220 and 240 is something for a supercharger you would see at your EV charging station for fast charging capabilities. So 110 would be more for like a two to two and a half hour charge, whereas 220, 240, you're looking at a 20 minute give or take charge to get you from A to B. So we're pretty excited overall in terms of what is capable of the price point, the, the value proposition on the range, and also the accessibility to power the vehicle. So what do you see the target market for these vehicles currently? Well, right now it's pretty widespread. Um, we're selling them to colleges, universities, uh, takeout restaurants, uh, people um, that want to go to the fast food and get their hot meals and hot beverages. We have an e frunk inside these cars, so therefore proprietary once again to our company that we're developing for our aircraft, where you can place the um, your hot food and beverages in the trunk, the e frunk, and it will keep it hot up to seven and a half hours. Um, 
were about 160 degrees Fahrenheit. So it was pretty neat. When you look around, you see companies like Domino's trying to experiment with different versions of getting food to you in a hot manner. Those are typically those big bulky ovens they're placing in these vehicles. And that's, a, my opinion, that's a, it affects your performance and it also can increase your ability to catch on fire. So we're doing something that's very unique because our aircraft will need to be de-iced at times and we, keep, and we don't want to use, create an environmentally friendly aircraft and then use chemicals or harsh materials to de-ice it, not to mention the equipment that would be required on top of these uh, heliports, if they, if they want to call it that. Um, it doesn't really work in the overall ecosystem. So we're, we're pretty much cutting edge. So talk a little bit more about the Paragon universe. Mm -hmm. You have vast, you have multiple products. Yeah. Uh, automotive, the VTOL, yeah. you have some chemical applications that will heat um, and keep uh, surfaces yes. um, from freezing up. So how does all those products and the, uh, uh, the offerings from the VTOL, uh, the Paragon universe, how does that all tie together? Well, um, it, it's, that's, pretty, that's a great question. Uh, we have to have reliable energy. Um, if you look around, everywhere you turn, there's a blackout or a brownout, depending on which region of the country you're in. So as a result, we created our own energy system uh, through our company, GTEC, which stands for the Green Tech Energy Company. And we're developing Megapacks, our competitor, our version of the Tesla Megapack. Our uh, GTEC uh, Future Energy Pack is a 20-foot shipping container that has, has about four megawatts of power using the same technology that you'll see in our cars in the NV2 and in our aircraft, uh, which basically is 10% lithium. So we don't use the entire thing. We basically sip it because we can maximize the distribution of the power output by 10 times using other things within that shipping container. With, and that creates enough power for 4,500 homes for up to four hours. So that's pretty revolutionary. I call it the most powerful backup battery generator within our planet. Uh, so we're developing that through our energy division, and then we're going to small scale that eventually for our aircraft. So we're going to get things moving along. We're going to start off with the big energy packs. We're going to put them in these cars. We eventually we'll put them in the aircraft. We already have homes. We have a, a residential project. We built it in for uh, someone's home as well as a commercial building. So we're pretty excited about that. We have our Clearport division, which is our infrastructure company. We're going to need airports, a lot of them, all over the world, like multiple um, in different neighborhoods. And that's really important um, because my vision is to make the airport more intimate, closer to your home, having the NVs from our here, these local commute vehicles, that you can drive them up to the local Vertiport or Clearport, jump on the VTOL, get to your next destination, and there's a car waiting for you. Your alternative, if you don't use services like this, you'll have to use like an Uber or a Lyft, some ride share, phone a friend, rent a, rent a cab or a taxi or rent a car. And if you keep doing that three, four, five times in one day, it becomes very expensive. So I believe we have uh, a lot of accretive value within the Paragon universe for all of our different assets. So how do you see the next two to five, 10 years playing out? Mm. And how does, how does Paragon universe fit into that overall vision and what we're seeing happening in the future? Uh, next two to five years, I see us um, taking the, the foundational elements of what we're doing uh, it's, and, and building. I use like the mental modeling, the first law of physics, and trying to envision where we're going and build off of that. So uh, I see our energy companies supporting other industries, developing enough revenue for us to continue on our dream. I see our infrastructure company being established as multimodal transportation hubs because there is a shortage of EV charging stations and the ability to have the full service or a suite of services that go along with it. It's one thing to have a charging station. It's another to have a charging station that has access to public restrooms and other things that I don't see the consideration of EV today. So I see that as kind of building the blocks, if you will, foundational elements and kind of to grow from there. I see our, our NVs um, moving into a local vehicle is what we have right here. And I see the NV2 being something that's highway rated, which we'll announce pretty soon and unveil that vehicle. That will have a range over 600 miles. 
will be able to uh, fast charge in under five minutes, full charge in up to 10 minutes. Um, we'll have the same e-front that are available in our NV1s, as well as the ability to warm the battery, which is something that 99% of EVs have a problem with. When it gets cold outside, the battery discharges. And then you get alerts on your cell phone that says, please hook it up to a charger or get into an area basically where it's warm. So we wanna make sure we, we maximize and optimize that. And I think that'll help us. So that'll happen over the next two or three years. And then I see our aircraft division, Paragon VTOL getting in the market, tested, work out all our bugs and kinks and getting certified. We'll commercialize that upon delivery and offer it throughout all of our network within the Paragon universe. This way it can be affordable, accessible, reliable to anyone, anywhere, everywhere on planet Earth and beyond. So for the VTOL division, mm -hmm. what are some of the obstacles? I'm sure you're probably gonna have to work with some of the government agencies, sure. the FAA, FAA to kind of kink out uh, airspace. So what's, have you been working with FAA, FAA and, yeah. and what were some of the challenges that you're facing? You know, from the VTOL side, it, it, the challenges are quite numerous, uh, but I'm so relieved that there are other companies out there that are already heavily funded that can, I, I root for those guys. Let them spend the money. Make the market. Just make the market. Go out there and have fun. Be successful. Get as many accounts as you can and knock it out of the park. While you're doing so, work with the government regulatory agencies and get laws and things passed. Basically create the blueprint for other companies that eventually may want to venture into space like, like ours. This way, I don't have to spend as much capital up front we risk a deal for the investment audience as well as for the general public because there'll already be a market established and put out there. What we will do is learn from what they have areas of need and fill in those gaps. And while at the same time continue along our path of creating a sustainable infrastructure ecosystem. So who are your major competitors? And then as the industry is growing, as we see the, the vision carrying out, do you anticipate mergers and acquisitions along the way? Yeah, our major competitors are everyone. <laughs> <laughs> if we're talking energy, I mean, it is what it is. If we're talking infrastructure, that's pretty much a, a done deal. There are so many different companies out there that are fantastic. But I think, and, and then you've got the, the in, in the automobile sector, you have traditional vehicles and then you have low speed vehicles like ours. You have competitors out there. Uh, they're numerous, and then in the aviation sector, I, I mean, that goes without saying. Uh, but I think we've got a lot more tricks up our sleeve in every single sector that are areas of disruption. From the battery side, energy power generation, the infrastructure side, we are working to uh, establish uh, foundational elements on a massive highway project uh, in, in multiple states to um, strengthen the road surfaces so we don't have to have this construction season every single year because the roads can't withstand the amount of pressure placed on it today. Uh, that's a challenge. And I think we are, we're able to solve that today with technology we've been developing for our cars, our aircraft. That'll go a long way. Um, within the, uh, the VTOL sector, our competitors are anyone that wants to fly. I mean, it is what it is. Uh, our goal is to make a safe, reliable aircraft that has over 21 points of redundancy that is super strong in the event that you lose power and you land on the ground, you wanna make sure that it is like really right where it's supposed to be. So we have competitors, but you know what? I think we're in a good space as far as mergers and acquisitions along the way. I think when the Paragon universe finally rolls out in the, in the public sector, um, we love to see companies succeed prior to us getting there because we love to acquire them for pennies on the dollar. I think that's a great opportunity for us. And <laughs> who wouldn't wanna buy these great companies for, for cheap? So we're going to take advantage of that also when it's time to go shopping. Well, thank you for your time. Yes. I'm here. Thank you for having me. <laughs> <laughs> With Thanos Smith. Yes. Uh, best thanks, of luck to you. You got it. All right. Thanks, my friend. Yeah.